Notre Dame's ceiling. Now, here's how this goes. The question that I wrote down, uh, Notre Dame's ceiling under Brian Kelly or another coach. What is it? Are they better off with recruiting uh, and scheduling, staying with NBC uh, in the era of the college football playoff, or do they need to join a conference to become a legit perennial contender? What is the over-under of Notre Dame ever landing Urban Meyer or a coach of his caliber? Um, Now, that was a lot for one question. Basically, the question is, what is Notre Dame's ceiling as a program? Okay. I'll let you go ahead and take it first. Just just the program itself in their current state. I think the last five years we've seen their ceiling. I don't think they'll ever win another national title unless college football drastically changes something. Um. But I believe them and Michigan, their academic, we'll never see a team, a school with the academic standards of them, Michigan, Stanford. They can be good. Northwestern, love those guys. They can be good. They can have years where they compete for their conference or whatever or get into the playoffs like Notre Dame has, make it to a national title game like Notre Dame has. But they're never going to beat the big, big, big boys. They're just not because the separation of talent is too big. And and where you see the separation of talent, and this isn't a knock, this is my school too, this is LSU, baby. The, the separation of ACT scores is also massive. Yes. All right? The, the combined SAT of, of everybody on one school as opposed to another is huge. And you can't, you just can't outrun that. At some point in time, Urban Meyer can't fix this, all right? And Urban wouldn't go there and try to fix it because he knows I can't bring those dudes there. He just can't. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh is an incredible football coach. I I believe in him more than most people. What he did at Stanford was incredible and unique. And he's not really doing anything different here, except Ohio State is substantially better than USC was at that time. Yes. That's yeah. it. The only difference is, is his ceiling is the exact same. He still only loses two games a year. But instead, he was able to beat his rival there. He's not able to beat his rival here. The separation of the haves and have-nots is so much bigger today than it was 10 years ago when he was at Stanford. Yes. Uh, Matt and jumped in on, on YouTube. Those academic schools can't do it anymore. Yeah, this and this goes to the question about the coach and whatnot. Uh, he said, who are they going to get that's better than Kelly? He Nobody. said, that's like Saban. If he dips for a year or so, who is Bama going to get that's better? There's only a limited number of high-quality coaches uh, and then Michael jumped in, just like anything else. Money drives everything. I don't think they'd ever leave NBC. I think their deal with NBC is better than what they would get from a conference other than what the SEC has got going right now. Now, obviously, Notre Dame, this this whole COVID situation is not really going to touch them so long as there is a football season, right? Uh, they don't, they've got their ACC stuff going with basketball and with the Olympic sports, et cetera. With football, they get a massive check from NBC just for their home games, just for the games that they have. They don't have to worry about anything else. They don't have to worry about the conference or or whatever. They don't have to split money. None of that. Uh, Their stuff is set. I think that you're right about the ceiling of the program being, you know, you get to the playoff every now and then, and that's pretty good. I think it's It's pretty good. Brian, now the difference that I feel like is when you are an institution like that, You can make exceptions for insanely talented athletes if you want to. But you can't do it enough to fill a roster. Alabama and Clemson and Ohio State don't have four stars on the team. Okay? They're five deep, five stars. All right? Three stars don't exist in their world. They've got got four stars and five stars. Very few three stars. But, yeah, it's not all five stars. They don't have this. While they can make an exception for a specific player here or there, they'll never be able to do it for an entire roster. It's Michigan's biggest problem. Yeah. It's Michigan's biggest problem. Michigan had a shitload of NFL five-star dudes. But at some point in time, those guys come off the field. And somebody else comes on the field, and that guy's got a three or two-star next to him. That's 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 the separation. That's the play that the team breaks your back. Yeah, You go at that cornerback, you run the ball at that linebacker, and you gash him for 30, 40 yards. Yeah, and, and there's cost nothing you. you can do about it. Uh, Matt said Notre Dame should be happy with a top 25 team consistently and yep. some years to get into the top 10. 
Yeah. And I, I think I, I agree with that. I'm okay. And here's the thing. The conference, as much as I've always wanted them to join a conference, just because I think it'd be a little more fun to see them compete and build different rivalries than what they traditionally had. Um, they play a tough schedule. It's not like they play some laxative. Hell, their schedule is a million times harder than if they would have joined the ACC. Okay. If they were just joined the ACC, that schedule would be a cakewalk compared to what they've played the last two to three years. Yes. All right. Agree. But, but at the same time, I just don't see them being able to get over that hump. I don't, right now, I don't foresee in the viable future for them to consistently be able to beat the Bamas, the Ohio States, the Clemsons. Um, you know, it, I think they could hang with Oklahoma. If they were ever able to get into a playoff and able to mit, match up with Oklahoma, I, I don't see any reason why they couldn't. I'm not saying they'd beat them, but, but I think they could hang in that game. Oh, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. I, I don't I think, because they've they, got comparable talent. Like, it's, that's the that's way it right. goes. Uh, you know that kind of that. Let's go ahead and move that into uh into a different conversation. Um, let's see. Bobby James jumped in on. Oh well, let me get through some of these questions on uh on on the sure. chat here. Uh, Michael said their best chance is recruiting a great quarterback and some talented skill guys around him. I think it has more to do with the line of scrimmage than it does all of that. Like it. Well, and here's what's weird: they've put NFL dudes in an offense. And yeah. they've put NFL dudes in on defense from the defensive line and offensive line. I really don't know that that's always it. it that's it, think it's about not Alabama's always pass it. Pass rush. One of the reasons Alabama is able to have a and LSU this year and in past years, Georgia, same thing. Clemson, the same thing. The most elite level, Ohio State. Those are probably the four best pass rushes in all of football. Auburn's in the consideration too. They have front four that can get to the quarterback every snap of every play without blitzing anybody. And they have world-class elite level defensive backs and linebackers to cover everything else. While, while uh, Notre Dame has put NFL dudes in from the defensive front that could get that pass rush, they don't have the secondary guys to hang with. There, there are no DBs coming out of, coming out of Notre Dame to go in the NFL. There, there are a few linebackers every now and then that are that level talented. Okay. Yeah. The problem is, is you got to have it at all three levels on both sides of the ball if you want to hang with those big boy teams. The separation between the okay and the great are wildly apart. Uh, Matt jumped in on that. He said they have to come down and get some of these southern boys. There's not many Catholics down here, though. It, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's and that's the thing. Convince them to go play up north, which is something Michigan's having a hard time doing. As well. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, jelly beans. <laughs> and then you gotta hope that they're willing to come to a private school like that. Yeah, where they're gonna have harder academic standards. Yep. This is not one of those things we're gonna take underwater baffet weaving and and, and still be able to yeah years and not be able to read. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And listen, I'm not mocking those kids. I was those kids. All right. I was. I I went to Ole Miss. I got an education. I was in one field. I didn't do very well in that field. I just had to get a degree by any means necessary. Mama said, get a degree. I went and got a degree. I pulled up the football program and I saw 80% of those kids was criminal justice majors. I said, I'm switching my major tomorrow. And I'm not lying. I was in class with people that I know could not read. Yeah. Yeah. And we all passed with C's and B's. It was not hard. Nobody gave us grades. It just wasn't that damn hard. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Okay. That class doesn't exist at Notre Dame. That degree damn sure doesn't exist. That, well, they might have a class or two for dum dums. They don't have a degree for dum dums. No, not not down there, not down there. Um, quick question from uh, 